Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to be making this low poly sea shack scene. So this is a continuation of the sort of low poly introduction to Blender 2.8 course. So I'm assuming you've had a go at the previous two sessions, the low poly well and the man and the monster scene, and that you're relatively happy with the interface and getting used to many of the tools. So in this series we're trying to advance those tools and introduce a few more and hopefully coming up with a nice outcome. And we'll be talking about artistic techniques and how you can create your own scenes similar to this. You can find this course and other courses on gabbit.co.uk where all the courses are free. And you could join the Discord server where there's competitions and like-minded people. So let's take a look. When you first see a scene like this, it can be a bit intimidating because the artist has spent a fair bit of time going through each of the aspects that create the scene. But when you actually break it down and look at the individual details, there's probably not much here that you couldn't already model if you've done the previous two courses. So the first thing I'm going to model is the actual shack itself. And we'll start with the wooden planks. Now when modeling something like this, I like to create about three and then it gives me a base or a set of three modules that I can put together to make buildings. So I'll have three different planks, perhaps only one column post that I can adapt easily and some thicker beams like this so I can easily build up the shack. So I'm going to start a new scene, file, new, general, and I've got my shortcut keys down the bottom left here. So let's begin. We'll start with the default cube once again, scale in the Z and scale in the Y. So there's our sort of plank shape. Actually, I'll make it a tiny bit bigger in the Y. There we go. Now from the top, I'm going to duplicate that, shift D and grab it in the X and duplicate it once more and grab it in the X. And I'm just doing this so I can think about the different sizes that I might need. I'm going to have a long plank, a medium plank, and a short plank. And I'll probably just adapt them as I go along. So we'll start with the long plank. Now if I go into edit mode now, by pressing tab on my keyboard, or edit mode up here. And then into edge mode by pressing 2, or going to edge mode up here. And press control B to bevel, like we did in the last course. Move my mouse from side to side. You can see the bevel is not uniform. So I'll undo that. So if I go back into object mode and click on item up here, you can see that's because the scale is non-uniform. So we scaled it outside of edit mode. You can go to edit mode straight away, scale, and you'll be fine. But because I scaled when I was in object mode, the results in edit mode will be unusual. We can set the scale by pressing control A. The reason I'm showing that again is because that's a common pitfall for beginners. We'll need to do that on our other piece of wood as well. And you can see their scale there. When I click on this one, because I've set the scale, you can see it's all set to one. So now when I go into edit mode and edge mode, I can press control B and I can bevel my piece of wood to somewhere around there. Now I'm going to create a couple of loop cuts. So control R and use the wheel on your mouse to create more. I'll create three on the longer one. And if I grab a loop with alt left click, alt enables you to grab loops. I can then rotate this to create some distortion. I'll select this one and this one with shift and rotate those as well. And we've got a sort of distorted plank. I'm also going to create two down the middle here. Grab this one and just rotate that slightly. Go to a different angle and rotate it slightly again. And you can see we've got a plank looking thing. I'm going to create a little notch in the end the same as we did for the roof tiles previously. So a loop cut at the end here, somewhere around there. K for my knife tool, and then I get this green square. And I can cut around here, go all the way to the other side. And you can go through two edges like this and click, and it will create two vertices for you, and then line it up at the end. And it does snap for you as well, so that's handy. Ideally, you're trying to finish where a vertex is. So I've got one there, press Enter to finish. And there's a couple of ways I can create my little nick. I can delete these faces and then fill in the gap. I could create a cut down here and then pull it inwards. So have a quick think how you might create this. Probably the easiest way is just control R, scale it down and pull it inwards. So top view, G to grab and pull it in. Now that does create this unusual topology here. And if I go to object mode, you can sort of see that's not ideal. And really, instead of a quad here, 
that's probably best as a triangle. So I can cut that there and you can see the shading suddenly changes and it makes more sense. So if I go to the other side, the other way of doing it is in vertex mode with one, or you can select it up here, select the two vertices and press J to join. And there we've got our little notch or split. So I'm going to create the long plank again without the split. So in object mode, let's make sure we've reset the scale by control A, apply the scale, and then we can go to edit mode Choose our edges with two and control B. Somewhere around there. Control R, I'll just do one loop cut this time. And control R and just do two. Rotate those two. And pull this one down. Rotate and grab. Just so it's got a planky look. So I've got my two planks there. They're a bit uniform at the ends. So I'm going to select both. Into edit mode and turn on proportional editing. And the shortcut is O. And I'm going to turn on see-through mode or X-ray mode there. So when I select something and press G to grab, I've got my circle of influence here. And if I want to change my circle, G to grab and then use the wheel. Now I'm moving these across because when it's in solid shading, you can actually see the lumpiness and the topology. So if I move these around, it gives it a nice effect. So there we have two planks. I think actually for this plank, if I go back into edit mode, I think actually it's better with two loop cuts. So I'm going to press G, G to edge slide. So it will slide along the edges. Then I can put another edge loop down here. And I'll just rotate this really slightly. Maybe move it, maybe grab it downwards somewhere around there. So that's great, I've got two planks there. I think what I'll actually do is delete this one and just copy this one. So Shift D to copy this one and bring it across in the X axis. So tap X to move it in the X. And I'm making a short plank here so I can just grab these at the end. I might turn off proportional editing now with O, G and then Y. So bring those in and grab this end, G then Y. Make sure we edit those slightly, so select a few, rotate, select an edge loop and rotate that. So now we have a shorter plank. Now you can create variations of these by duplicating, Shift D, then X, and you can just rotate 180 degree around the Y axis and it does look fairly different. And that's by pressing R, Y, 180. The same for objects like this, Shift D in the X, and then we can rotate it in the Z 180. So with just a couple of variations, you can create a lot of variation in your wood. So let's create one of the decks. I'll go to top view, grab a few pieces of wood and stagger them. Rotate in the Z 180, so it's got some variation and G to grab and pull that in. So we've got part of our deck there. I'm going to grab the camera and light and move it to a different collection. Have a think what that command is. So it's M to move to collection, new collection and camera and lights. And press OK. And then I'll go up and hide that. And I'm going to select these and put them in a collection called Platform 1. Now when I duplicate these and move them across to the side here, which is slightly incorrect, I needed four actually. So I'll just undo that and copy these ones and then copy them across. So I've got this sort of staggered pattern now. I now have a simple platform. I can select them all, go into edit mode and use proportional edit. I could join them together and sculpt them. The choice is yours. I'm going to use proportional edit. I'm going to go to vertex mode and just move these things around a little bit. Try and fill in the gaps as well if you can. This is probably best in top view. If you want to select a whole of a plank, you just press L. Make sure you deselect everything first and then press L. And then you can move a whole plank if you need to. And there we've got a nice bit of variation and it's looking fairly good. I would say there's a bit too much uniformity in the middle there, so I'm going to move that around a bit.
And there we go, that's a bit better. So what I need now is some supporting beams. So let's create a beam. I'll start at this end. So I'll press Shift right click to move my cursor to that point. Shift A to select a cube. And this time I'll go into edit mode and I'll scale it down just a touch. Face mode with three. Select this face and bring it across. So G to grab in the X axis and I've got proportional edit still on. So I've still got the circle. So I'll undo that with right click or cancel that with right click and press O to turn off proportional editing. Now G then X and I can bring it across to the other side. So this is going to overlap slightly as you can see there. Let's select our edges and bevel. All the edges selected. Control B and move your mouse to create the bevel. And then Control R to select some loop cuts. It depends on how much distortion you want as to how much loop cuts you need, but I'm just doing two for now. Double left click to select them in that place and Control R to rotate and add some distortion. You might also want to scale out the ends. Wood tends to split and expand at the end. You might therefore want another loop cut in here to really visually see that expansion. But it is quite an exaggeration really. So let's go into side view and move that underneath our platform. And then, sorry, that was front view. Now side view with three on your numpad and move that across in the Y, so G then Y. And for these to hold up, they would need another two of these. So into side view again, Shift D, one there and one there. Now I need a bit of variation in these so I can rotate them in the Z axis 180 degrees. Now the reason it's jumped over here is because of my pivot point. So I set my pivot point over to the side. I'm just going to have to go to top view, grab that in the X axis and move it across. But it's kind of handy having your pivot point at the end because if I scale in the X axis now, I can just push that across and it generally only expands one way. If I had the pivot point right at the very end, that would be more useful. Then you can line one end up and expand the other end out as you need it. Okay, so that's the first platform. And you can probably see from there how you can build the wooden frame for the shack. I'm just going to build a couple more things and then I'm going to leave you to do the rest of that base structure. So the other thing I had was some supporting stilts. So let's go to top view and my cursor's in position over here, that's fine. Shift A and add mesh cylinder. Now the cylinder's always a bit high poly, I would say, for low poly work. So I would say something around eight should be fine. It depends how low poly you want to go. And let's go into edit mode straight away. With everything selected, we can scale in the Z. Let's go to front view. It's probably a bit thick, so perhaps scale shift Z. So we scale in everything but the Z to make it that bit thinner. Now you might want to bevel the tops or the caps. In this case, I don't think it makes as much difference. But what you will want to do is control R and do a few loop cuts across your shape and then select a couple with Alt left click and rotate them slightly. And there we have a nice sort of distorted stilt. You might want to put a notch in the top. So let's go into edit mode, grab that top face and full stop or period key on your numpad will zoom you into that face. And then you can cut out a little notch there. It's slightly more tricky in this case because we have an end gone at the top, which is just one face with lots of sides. We can easily adapt that by going to vertex mode, selecting two vertices and pressing J to join. And now we've created some quads. However, that doesn't lend itself particularly well to a split down here. Usually these are based on tree trunks, which obviously have rings that go into the center. So I'll undo that. Probably a better way would be to select the top face, inset, and bring them all the way into the middle. Somewhere around there is fine. Back to vertices mode with one, and then Alt M to merge at center. Now we can easily create a split in here. If I press Control R, I can bring a loop cut up here, and then I can press K for my knife, and create a split that goes down there. I'll use my knife tool again, so K, and create some topology in the middle here. 
and then with that middle vertices, full stop on my numpad to zoom into that, and then let's just grab it and bring it in. And there we created our split. And you might want to adapt this a bit thicker or thinner. The smaller it is, the less likely you'll be able to see it. And I think on my model I do have some, but they're so small you can't really see them. So we need four of these poles going around our shack. I created a shorter one on one side. That's easy enough. Shift D to duplicate in the X axis, bring it across, and then we'll adapt the shape just by grabbing our vertices. Make sure you're in X-ray mode for this, which is there, or wireframe mode will do the same thing. And you can grab those in the Z axis easily enough. It does increase the distortion in some ways. So you might want to go into edit mode and just tidy it up a bit. Back to solid mode. So see how you get on creating the base of your shack. You can see mine a bit closer here. I've got sort of random planks going across just to give it some variation. I've got supporting beams just holding up other beams in places. So do look at structures and see how they're made. I've got supporting beams holding those other supporting beams attached to the stilts. And I've adapted the shape here for the roof and put some small ones in for a doorway and some windows. This is kind of poorly done really. I could have some supporting beam around there. And of course there's no supporting beam there so that would actually not work. But you can get away with bits and pieces like that. So see how you get on with that. Try and complete the shack with the wooden frame. Don't worry too much about the minor details. The roof and other pieces will go into more detail in later episodes. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.